Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Reviews. Before we get into the comic we're about to talk about, I want to tell you about a new series here on the channel, an Ask Me Anything series where I answer your questions that you submit to me, whether it's about my opinions on certain comics, certain creators, uh, certain art styles, certain books, characters, whether it's about movies, TV shows, anything pop culture, anything about being a YouTuber, anything like that, I want you to submit your questions to me so I can have things to talk about in that weekly ask me anything video so how do you submit a question well there is a, a tip page that I have set up here just put your name in there select a tip amount and in the tip message leave me what question you want me to answer and once a week I will gather all of those up and do a weekly ask me anything where I will answer your questions all right with that out of the way let's dive into this week's comic Hi guys, welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Batman issue 89, written by James Tineen IV, with art by Carlo Pagiulin. This is another solid, solid issue from James Tineen IV, and hopefully you actually got your hands on one of these because the spec market has gone insane over this issue. Why, you ask? Well, this features the first appearances, or at least first cameo appearances, of a couple new characters. One, the designer, who is the uh, big bad that's putting all of the plans that uh, Batman is going through uh, together. And then it also features the first, I'm going to call it a cameo appearance, by Punchline, a new character that is being billed as the new Harley Quinn, a new female character character that is serving that same role to the Joker that Harley Quinn originally played and has since grown out of for better or worse depending on your take on Harley Quinn but aside from those two first appearances or first cameo appearances this is like I said another great issue we continue to peel back the layers of the designers plans we see some great Batman stuff we get to know a little bit about those uh, assassins that we've met in the first couple issues we got a great character moment between Batman and Catwoman, something that I really appreciated. But all in all, like I said, a, another great issue from James Tinian the fourth. Not that we would expect anything less from JT4. All right, let's dive right into this issue because, like I said a couple times, it is a pretty damn good. All right. So we open it up here. We got uh, a great scene here in a hospital with a doctor and a nurse kind of complaining about just bitching and complaining about life in Gotham. Uh, the doctor there is, you know, talking about how Bruce Wayne is some lunatic billionaire tearing up half the city to build something sight unseen. We should probably all wear respirators from the smoke and the dust. And then the nurse cracks back and says we should uh, already all have respirators from all the Joker toxins in the air. I really appreciate it that and then someone walks in screaming and it is the penguin still miraculously alive after Deathstroke slit his throat in the last issue although he says he's been stabbed here but that's uh, he was his throat got slit a little bit and so he runs in there and he says uh, I trust you know who I am I'll pay you a hundred thousand dollars if you call this number and ensure I survive the night if not I'll kill your family. <laughs> that's, uh, so, yeah, he's like, uh, I live or everyone you love dies. That's, uh, it's pretty hardcore there, Penguin. And I love here that, um, the, that, uh, Batman basically, like, just curb dumped him at the, at the ER. You can even see some blood there, uh, on the curb. Great stuff. And then we go see Batman here, and he is, uh, fighting a Gunsmith. Real name, Douglas Worth. Uh, a veteran of half a dozen military contractors in the Middle East quietly fired from each one for testing experimental weaponry in the field without approval. Yeah, that'll get you fired from some places. Uh, he began working as a domestic mercenary two years ago and graduated to a con on attract killing so he's getting drug behind or Batman is getting drugged behind his motorcycle here, uh, th tosses a battering, hits whatever gun he's firing, and it blows up in his uh, face. Um, and then Batman it takes him down pretty well with ease, as you would expect Batman to. Uh, but I really love this this picture right here. We see the toll of what Batman does and what, what the toll it takes on him. His whole left side is just ripped to shreds with road rash uh, from getting drugged behind or drugged 
dragged. I think dragged is the appropriate word, although it doesn't always sound right to my ears. You can see the road rash on there, but I do also appreciate that uh, the artist gave him a knee brace here because, you know, as Deadpool says, those superhero landings are hard on the knees, as I would expect. Uh, also, are um, you jumping between rooftops, things like that. So, um... Batman calls into Lucius and says, uh, I'm reacting, and that's clearly what they want. They're trying to overwhelm my faculty so I can't get a sense of the full picture. We need to change tactics. Now, that was uh, something we learned last issue where some of these assassins told them that their plan is basically keep Batman busy so the real assassins like Deathstroke can go kill Bruce Wayne. You guys are going to have a hard time with that. So uh, I'm guessing at this point, the designer and maybe even Deathstroke don't know who Batman is, but we'll talk about that a little bit more once we get to the last page, right? Uh, so Lucius, or uh, Batman tells Lucius to find Catwoman. Uh, it says here, if Penguin isn't lying, she knows who's behind this and her comms line is line is dead uh we saw that um at the end of last issue where she was digging up a grave and harley quinn uh comes in to save her and that's what we get here in a couple uh good action sequences where you got uh, the two ladies flipping around and kicking the crap out of some bad guys who've got shovels and you know some of that green stuff uh coming out of their mouths and i love this uh, harley cracks to uh or uh, i'm sorry catwoman cracks to harley you get homesick or something and she says oh yeah i missed the sound of my mallet smacking the skull of a bozo on a nice night in gotham of course you do there harley so um they fight and everything and so uh, she says here, uh, you know that's not Joker in the coffin, that's not Mr. J, uh, he was just a gang member named Artie who worked with us a while back, uh, who's a funny kid, sweet too, a little weird in the head, but that kind of comes with the territory, yeah, it, it kind of comes with the territory of, of working uh, with the Joker. Um, and so I love this a little story here about the Joker, um, where Harley says that um, Joker always likes Batman to know it's him. And she says here, I think this is like the time we tried to gas all the movie houses in the theater district. But right when we got the plan set up, Two-Face had this whole thing with banks and silver dollars. My pudding was so sweet, he almost blew a gasket. So I, I like that. The Joker always wants to know, um, always wants Batman to know that it's him when he's doing stuff and so um she also says joker's been cleaning house uh, she's been following the clues for a little bit he's been leaving a trail of dead clowns all over the coast we saw that in uh, a couple issues ago where joker torched some uh, some of his goons there as as the joker does and so uh, they, they keep talking, and then Harley stops an arrow from hitting Catwoman right there in the head, and it is shot by Malcolm Merlin, who is joined by uh, Cheshire, and um, she says here, for the love of God, Merlin, shut up and kill her already. And of course, he's trying to you know do some bad guy posturing, which, yeah, that's it's not going to work out for you, Malcolm. And so, right here, we get our first look at Punchline. Really just um, some of her head or hairstyle, and she's looking through some uh, binoculars at, at the goings-on there um, in the graveyard, just keeping an eye on things. Um, interesting stuff. All right, so next up, we go to this creepy dude, and he, Batman recounts some story about how um, he killed some people and surgically removed their teeth and implanted them in their stomach, and that's all really, really gross and makes me... A little bit queasy so I'm not gonna go into it um, um, too much we do get some fun interactions here between Lucius and um, and Batman um, Batman says Riddler's not here that's strange um, and Lucia says is it really that strange these assassins are targeting your classic rogues gallery wouldn't he be high on the list um, as a relative layman who can't keep track of all the costumes I put him pretty high on the list and so Batman says I was expecting some kind of death trap and Lucius is like so the fact that there is no death trap is what's worrying you and of course yeah he says effectively it means something happened 
happened here before Mr. Teeth arrived. Enigma has spent months in this room watching the city uh, nonstop as a ghost in the machine. One of the reasons I hadn't made my play against the Riddler is that the floor is lined with C4. Every tile in the floor is pressure sensitive. It's a game board, but the game wasn't set up. Very interesting. Um, and so uh, Batman says here, uh, this is the, the Riddler not setting up the game board is a message in and of itself. He wants me to be asking these questions, which just tells you some of the insane pathos that Batman goes through, jumping through these mental hoops or doing these mental gymnastics. Um, crazy stuff. He notices that one of the monitors there is open, and then we get our first official in comic look at the designer, and he looks like a fashion designer. Uh, all right, um, and so uh, we Batman notices here that uh, Nigma is typing something out. You can see his hand under the, the console there typing out something um, in Morse code, um, I believe it is, because the audio is turned off, and so Batman translates it really quick to Sphinx on an alphanumeric keypad because of, of course he knows how to do that. Even Lucius calls him on that. He's like, you're kidding me. There has to be something in your cowl that does that for you, and he says, remember, I was expecting a death trap. Alfred used to test me when I was on stakeouts. I know all, I know some keywords in all the basic encryptions. Um, and so basically it's, it's a sphinx riddle. Uh, there are the sphinx's riddle, what walks on four legs in the morning, two at midday, and three legs in the evening, which is, of course, the answer is man. And the, the reasoning for that is when you're a toddler, you crawl on four legs, then you walk on two legs when you're uh, most of your life, and then you have a cane when you're older. Um, a great little riddle there from the riddle himself and so Batman uh, tells uh, Lucius to release the fleet of bat spawn what the hell are bat spawn apparently it is this fleet of bat drones um, that Lucius has put together for Batman you can see them all uh, flying out here to go do their bidding cool cool stuff i think i like batman working uh with lucius don't get me wrong i'd love to have alfred back um maybe not sooner rather than later i'm sure alfred will come back at some point maybe even in 5g that's coming uh in the next year or so and i love it deathstroke here's like oh show off god batman what are you doing and then that's when harley and selena show up at edward nigma's playhouse and she's screaming eddie you in here i swear i'm gonna wring your neck for leaving me in that oh oh hi honey hi batman i didn't see you there what's going on and then i love uh harley's like uh hey bats where should we stick the murder people and he says in the corner with the others good call <laughs> i love that um and so that's when um uh, Selena basically said she's going to come clean to him. He says, we need to talk. And she says, yeah. And she looks and sees the designer and instantly recognizes him, says he has Eddie Penguin still in danger if he's alive. And Joker, if he's ready to come out of hiding. Um, and, and Harley says, yeah, Joker's got a whole thing going. Um, Batman and Harley, or not Harley, I'm sorry, uh, Selena spills the beans to Batman, says he's called the designer. Years ago, I made a deal with him. We all did at Gotham's biggest bads. I'll tell you everything, but first I need to say I'm sorry. And that is a, one of my favorite moments. Like, she, they're in a relationship and she doesn't try to hide something from him. One of the things that I hate in writing or in drama TV is when someone just problems could be solved when people just talk to each other and here bat or selena clearly just spills her beans and says this is what happened i'm sorry and it's open and active in communication and even in last issue she was you know checking on something and readily was going to say hey I'll, i need to tell batman about this before her comms went out so i i love that they don't that selena is not withholding information from batman just for the sake of drama i think it's a mature decision on the the part of a fantastic writer um in james tinian and then we get the epilogue here we get another look at uh punchline here more of her face we can see her clown makeup and she talking to the Joker and he says there are a few people I need to talk to first before the big game starts and ho ho holy crap look at that murder board behind him he's got pictures of almost the entire Bat family of Nightwing, Red Hood, Red Robin, Robin and 
uh, Batgirl with their uh, civilian pictures and their full names. So the Joker knows who all four Robins, uh, past and present, are, uh, minus Stephanie Brown, because she is a Robin for at least five seconds, and Barbara Gordon. She, he knows who all of they are who all of them are, which means he probably also knows who Bruce Wayne is. Very, very interesting stuff. Like I said, another fantastic issue uh, from James Tanyan with a couple um, uh, first appearances, maybe even in just cameo, and then a big bomb there at the end, which sets us up to go into an hopefully awesome uh, issue five of this story arc so guys what you think of batman 89 did you actually get a copy of this um before the spec uh, the speculators uh cleaned your shop out i know at my lcs they actually didn't put any extra copies on the shelf they made sure they had their pull list um, or their subscribers covered and then just kept the rest in the back for the people they knew weren't there just to buy it and flip it on ebay which i commend it may end up hurting their business but it helps the fan community and i've seen other stories like that around the web so guys what did you think of batman 89 let me know all your thoughts and opinions down in those comments down below i thank you so much for watching if it's your first time here at the channel please consider hitting that subscribe button for me it would mean a lot and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop